Good morning and welcome to First Press. I am Bo Mircha, Associate Pastor here, and it's my great honor to welcome you in God's presence. I like to, to encourage you to think about the church in Jerusalem, the very first church as we know it. What stands out about that? One of the things that comes to mind is that church continue to meet every day. In the beginning, they will go to temple every day and share the gospel. They will meet with faithfulness and, and, and worship together, pray together. And out of that, God worked miracles. People were saved, people were taken care of, and the whole world has changed because of their dedication to what? To being together in prayer, to being together in learning. And today is no different. We are coming as one to pray, to worship, to sing. And we pray that God will open the doors of, of heaven and let his spirit be with us. So I want to invite you now to worship. This is the time to worship. God is with you. Let's worship together. Hi friends. Right now I just invite you to take a deep breath. We are so blessed to be able to spend the next little while just focusing our minds and hearts on God, on the love he has for us, the love we have for him and each other. It is good to worship together. Let's pray. Holy God, thank you for knitting this community of believers together. We ask, Lord, that, that you would bless this worship, that you would draw us closer and closer to your Son as we learn more what it means to be his disciple. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing of being able to gather even when we are apart. And we just ask, Lord, that this worship would bring us peace and joy. We pray in your, in your Son's name. Amen. Community updates. There are a few things that I want to share with you, and uh, uh, the first one is on uh, Monday, July 26th at 6 p.m., 
uh, there, uh, we're going to have a memorial service here uh, for Ruth Oyer. Um, at, uh, so the service will be here at First Press. So if, uh, if you want to join us for that, we'll, uh, we'll appreciate that. So remember, Monday, July 26 at 6 p.m. Uh, memorial service. Now, I, I want to share with you a few things as we're thinking about fall. Uh, it's important for us to, to, to try to look beyond, um, beyond the pandemic, beyond all those things, but at the same time, we still need to, to be very conscious and safe uh, about the way we're doing things. So, as I shared with you before, uh, the session at, at, this point, at this time really recommends that we, we will be uh, cautious about it. But that will still give us the opportunity for us to, um, to do a few things, right? Like on Sunday morning, have our service and after that have coffee hour and then uh, Sunday school class. Uh, that will be, I think, very, very uh, uh, exciting for so many of us, right? We can still use the time to fellowship together, but also learn together. Uh, we're thinking and uh, uh, trying to explore um, Wednesday night, what that means for Wednesday night. Right now, we know that we cannot have uh, the family meal like, uh, like we normally do, which is a great... Uh, great things to share, right, to, to, to be part of. But because of that, we need to rethink and see what can we do uh, in terms of a classroom uh, uh, for children or for the adults, what, uh, what are the things. So more information of that will come. So uh, I, I ask of you to, to pray for us, to give us, for God to give us wisdom and, and the know-how, right, of all those things. Also, since we're talking about prayer, continue to pray for uh, the uh, interim uh, search committee and also for uh, the, uh, the group uh, from Education Council that is looking at uh, the youth uh, children director job. So it's important uh, for, for us to, to think about all these things that are coming up. You know, we, we need to look for, a, uh, for organist, uh, a piano player, there is so much need in, in the church, but at the same time, I know there are some, so, some very good people working on, on those searches. So I want to encourage you to, to pray for them and to pray for us as we're, uh, we're going through all this. So with that being said, keep praying and I will see you next week. Take care.
Good morning, kids. Come closer. It's time for us to learn something new from the Bible. So today I want to talk to you about Jesus and his disciples. Do you remember how many disciples were there? How many disciples did Jesus have on his team? Can you shout it out? Was it five? Was it 10? Or was it 12? Now, if you answer 12, you got the right answer. So here's what I want to share with you. You see, Jesus, the good teacher, the son of God, God himself came to earth to share the good news that God loves the world, right? But even God, even Jesus, needed support. He needed people around him. And the Bible says that Jesus, one of the first things that Jesus did as he started his ministry, his work, was to call the twelve, to follow him and to be with him. And to me, that is really, really cool. You know why? Because when you are with somebody, right, when you follow them along, you get to learn firsthand. So let me tell you about a little experience I had about fishing. So I enjoy fishing, and I didn't fish in a while, but I'm looking forward to get back on the lake and throw the fishing pole out. One of the people that I learned how to, uh, how to fish is Captain Bob. Well, Captain Bob always liked to be on the water early in the morning. And then he will take time and show me how to put the bait on the hook and, and you know, what type of bait to use and all that thing. You know, it's really cool. And then you just, I just kind of stayed and, and kind of watched how he was doing, right? What he was doing, the way he was throwing, uh, you know, launching and bringing back, reeling it back. Well, we didn't catch too much fish, but we, I learned a lot about fishing. The reason I'm sharing that with you is, the, is for this reason. Sometimes we need to find somebody that we learn from, especially when it comes to things of faith. You know, for me, when it came to things of faith, there were friends, family, that, uh, that I got to talk to. And I'm sure that your parents, your grandparents, your church teachers, right, can be those people that you can ask the questions, that you can learn from. Remember, the disciples followed Jesus and they learned from him. They watched him the way he was talking to people. They watched him as he was teaching as he was helping. And those things change their lives, change their way of being. So what if you and I find a really good teacher about faith that will teach us about faith, a teacher in faith? So I want to encourage you today to, encourage you today to speak to your mom and dad, to your grandparents and friends and say, hey, can you pray for me? Can you be my teacher, my faith teacher? Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for everything that you do in our lives, for the people that share their faith with us. We give you thanks and we pray that you will continue to help us grow in our faith each and every day. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. You. Yes, you have an awesome week. You know, sometimes when I'm recording from a remote location and it's my turn to talk about the offering, I think, oh my gosh, what am I going to say this week? But ultimately, I guess you know what the offering is. Um, we give because God calls us to give and he calls us to give joyfully. And when we give to our church, we're supporting the life and mission of the church body. This is what enables us to grow closer to God and to one another. This is what enables us to gather together 
as groups, either through um, fellowship or study or ministry. And most importantly, friends, when we give our offerings to the church, we become empowered and stronger to help God's people who are in need and who we want to be able to help. We are stronger when we are together. So as you probably know by now, there are a few ways to give to First Presbyterian Church. If you happen to be worshiping in person at the church, which if you're in a place where you feel comfortable doing that, I really encourage you to do so. It's been wonderful to gather together and have coffee fellowship and just, just have just a little taste of normalcy. But if you are not able, for one reason or another, to worship in the sanctuary, there are other ways to give. You can mail in your offering or you can give electronically. And if that's an option that you would like to consider, please go ahead and either give the church office a call or take a look at the church website. Thank you so much, friends. It is such a joy to know that we are together in our love and worship of Jesus and that we are together in our want to serve him well. Will you please pray with me? Father, thank you for the gifts that you have given us that we are able to share. We pray, Lord, that you would open our hearts wider and wider as times go by and that we would see more and more opportunities to be generous in your name. We love you, Lord, and we want to do what you call us to do. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I find you in the seeking. Lord, I find you in the doubt. And to know you is to love you. And to know so little else I you
please join me in prayer. Lord God, you have declared that your kingdom is among us. Open our eyes to see it, our ears to hear it, our hearts to hold it, our hands to serve it. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's reading is from Genesis 39, verses 1 through 7. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, brought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care, with Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome, and after a while his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, let's pray. Father, as we worship you, we come from so many different places, so many different stages and seasons of life. I pray, Lord, for those who are seeking comfort, that they would be comforted. For those who are, are having a joyful time, that they would, would recognize the blessing and bounty of that. I pray for those who are alone, that people of faith would come into their lives. For those who are sick, I pray for peace and healing. For those who have experienced loss, I pray the same. Father, we're living in really interesting times. So please, Lord, draw our eyes and our hearts towards you. Reassure us through the Spirit, through the words of Scripture, through one another, that you are in charge and that we need not let our hearts be uneasy, even as we have to figure out new and different things on what feels like a daily basis. Father, thank you so much for, for your blessings, for the world, for the beauty that we can see in it. And as we thank you for those, Lord, we also pray, Lord. We pray for those who struggle. We pray for those who cannot worship you freely. We pray, Lord, for those who are, who are in charge, whether it be of a very small business, or a city, a state, a country, part of the world. We ask, Lord, that, that you would bring calm and order into the hearts of leaders. We pray that those are who are persecuted would feel your peace and feel your comfort. We pray, Lord, if anyone is suffering and we have the means or the tools to be of help, that you would open our eyes to that. I pray, God, for each person who is worshiping you in this moment. I pray, Lord, for their peace, for their safety. I pray that their discipleship would grow deeper and deeper, that they would see more and more clearly the gifts that you have given to them and how to use them. I pray, Lord, for all the leadership of First Presby Presbyterian Church from um, Pastor Bo, to all the people that make Sunday mornings work, make the video worship work. I pray, Lord, for the elders and the deacons as they serve and as they lead the church, that they would lead and serve well and to your glory. Father, you are good and you are with us and you are for us. So help us to remember that as we rise, as we go to bed in the evenings. You are a God of wonder. You are a God of awe. You are a God of goodness and of truth. So help us, Lord, to learn more about you, 
to um, continue to worship you, to continue to trust you. And we just thank you, Father. We thank you for your presence in the good times and in the bad times and in the confusing times when we, we don't necessarily feel you, that we know because we have faith that you are there. Lord, I pray your blessings upon all who love you. And I pray that you would call to you all those who don't. We pray all of this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. If thou but trust in God to guide thee with hopeful heart through all thy ways, God will give strength whate'er betide thee to bear thee through. Trust in God's unchanging love builds on the rock that not can move. Only be still and wait God's leisure in cheerful hope with heart content to take whate'er thy keeper's pleasure and all discerning love has sent. No doubt our inmost wants are clear to one who holds us always dear. Sing, pray, and swerve not from God's ways, but do thine own part faithfully. Trust the rich promises of grace, so shall they be fulfilled in thee. God never yet forsook at need the soul secured by trust in Last week, we met Joseph and his family. We were introduced to the dreamer, the young kid with a lot on his mind when it came to the future. But as Joseph shared those God-given dreams with his family, he soon finds himself at the bottom of a pit, and then he's sold into slavery in Egypt. Our first reading today talks about <coughs> Excuse me. Our first reading today talks about Joseph in Potiphar's house, where Joseph was in charge of the whole of the whole household. 
Let's continue that reading with Genesis chapter 41, verses 41 to 49. This is when Joseph is before Pharaoh, and after Joseph interpreted his dreams. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I put you in charge of the whole land, the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his, his ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him up in robes of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. He had him ride in a chariot as his second in command. And people shouted before him, make way. Thus he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, but without your word, no one will lift a hand or a foot in all Egypt. Pharaoh gave Joseph the name Zaphenath Apanea and gave him Asenath, daughter of Potiphera, priest of On, to be his wife. And Joseph went through the land of Egypt. Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from Pharaoh's presence and he traveled throughout Egypt. During the seven years of abundance, the land produced plentifully. Joseph collected all the food produced in those seven years of abundance in Egypt and stored it in the cities. In each city, he put the food grown in the fields surrounding it. Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain, like the sand of the sea. It was so much that he stopped keeping record because it was beyond measure. This is our Joseph. The same Joseph that we talked about last week, fearing for his life, being sold into slavery. This is the same Joseph. And later on into the story, we, we see that indeed a great famine comes over Egypt and all over the, the world at that time. And his family comes to Egypt for help. But there is more to this story. This is a story about grace, forgiveness, reconciliation. This is a story about God's grace and provision, not just for one person, but for generations to come. If you remember the story, Joseph ends up moving the whole family to Egypt. And the rest becomes the biblical history. The dream came to life. So while we focus on how God looks at you in the last sermon, today I would like for us to look at Joseph with a different lens and ask the question, what, pe what, what do people see when they look at you? What do people see when they look at you? Full disclaimer before we go any further. Today's sermon is about character, about those values that define us in our interaction with the people around. Maybe you have heard the, sell, the saying, tell me about your friends and I will tell you about yourself. Role models are necessary. They carry a lot of weight in our development, in the way we look uh, at life. Today I would like for us to befriend Joseph as a role model. When it comes to Joseph, we have to start with his faith in God. He has a very realistic view of faith. God is in who I am and the things I do. Genesis 39, 2-4 says, The Lord was with Joseph that he, he prospered. And he lived in the house in, of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success. 
in success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendants. So Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he entrusted to his quick care everything he owned. I would like to try something a little different today, something that the, whole, or the, that the old Hebrew teachers used to do. Answer the question with a question. Are you ready? Here you go. How do you know that the Lord is with you? Is it because all the things in your life are going well? Or is it because who you are reflects who God is? Knowing the story of Joseph, can you find God in Joseph? In which way, in which way was God reflected in Joseph, in Joseph's lives? Is it in his faithfulness? Is it in the way of, is it the way that Joseph treated those around him? Again, is it in his success? How was God present with Joseph? Do you remember Psalm 1? If you, do, if you do not, here's your cue. The faithful are like a tree planted by the water. By the water. Joseph's faith is what made him into that industrious and trustworthy young man. And it is faith that helps him when temptation comes into his life. While serving in Potiphar's home, the handsome and successful young man stayed humble and showed, showed great faithfulness to God and also to his human uh, master, Potiphar. And while Mrs. Potiphar tried to seduce him, his consciousness, his fear of God, helps him avoid this terrible sin. Martin Luther once said, I did not learn my theology all at once, but I had to search deeper for it where my temptations took me. This is the advantage of faith. It helps us grow in our, in our faith, in our life, when, even when we are at our weakest point in life. 1 Corinthians 10:13. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Years back, I listened to a sermon series titled Money, Sex, and Power. It focused on the main temptations that we face at people. All people are, are tempted. Temptation does not care about your status, about who you are, about how strong your faith is. Temptation will come your way. The scripture is a living testimony to that, right? From kings like Solomon to simple fishermen like Peter, the, we witness the spiritual warfare where temptation comes and tries to destroy who we are. And again, Martin Luther speaks on the issue. You cannot prevent birds from flying uh, in the air over your head, but you certainly can prevent them from building a nest in your hair. Joseph stands out as a godly man because time and time again he can rise above the temptations he encounters. For example, in Potiphar's house, as we already said, the sexual temptation. While he is in power, he proves himself to be fair, the way he treats people, no matter who they are. And that is what we remember him for, for the way he overcomes those temptations. 
Let's get real practical for a little bit. If you drive by the church, the church marquee says, be kind at all times. Pro tip, it's always possible. There is something in us as people that set us back when it comes to that. I'm talking about that mean streak that pops from time to time. I'm talking about the times when we have nothing nice to say about other people, about the way we treat others, and we end up holding grudges and bitterness. And sometimes that bites back in an unexpected way. Do you ever watch those videos on Facebook where somebody just loses their cool and their situation just escalates to something so big it becomes a news? For me, the apology that follows is sometimes more interesting than the situation itself because most people will say something along the lines. I was under a lot of pressure or something of my past uh, something from my past has triggered me and my reaction is not who I am. It was a moment of weakness. What do people see in you? Do they see the scars of the past or do they see the healing that took place? Are they able to see forgiveness and grace that define you, that define who you are? As I said, temptation comes to us in so many ways. It is the way we face those temptations that speaks about our character, that speaks about our faith, that speaks about what God is doing in our life, about the transformation that took place. Let's Look at Joseph's response at some of the setbacks he faced. Even in prison, Joseph is able to be kind, to engage and to build new relationships. When he is in prison, he is in the same cell with uh, two important people to Pharaoh, right? Two people that were close to Pharaoh and Joseph sees them and sees their sad faces. And he engages in conversation. And out of that conversation, he's able to help them, right? He's able to, to, re, to interpret their dreams. Instead of showing that typical prison hardness or, air or personal arrogance, you know, I am better than you, you know, or bitterness or hatred or distance. Joseph showed humility, compassion, and neighborly love. It was who he, who he was, his authentic self. What do, what do people see in you when you are under pressure? We can all wear a shirt that says, I am a work in progress, right? And I, I think that that is true. But there is more to that. Yes, we are a work in progress, but we are God's work in progress. It, it, what happens in us is a transformation. It is because we've been redeemed, forgiven, grace-filled. Grace, grace we are a work in pro a progress that is graceful. So, again, going back to, to Joseph as our role model, even under pressure, even under temptation, he was able to, to remember, to be that God-given person. So do you know who you are in God? Forgiven? Grace-filled? Empowered to go in the world and share the good news? Empowered to be part of God's kingdom? There's more to you that, than you know. 
Let's get back to our story. When Pharaoh is troubled because of his dream and he's filled with fear, Joseph becomes a calming presence. He brings a word of comfort and faith, a message of peace in troubled times. Misery loves company, but faith, faith lifts people from their despair. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. It takes courage and faithfulness to speak the truth to people when they are down. But still, faith will lift people out of their misery, out, out of that. What do people see in you? Do they see good company or do they see faith that comes to lift them up? What do people see in you? That is a very tricky question, isn't it? It's almost like I am to ask you, if you are to write your, your story and talk about your legacy today, what would you say? The greatest legacy one can pass to one's children and grandchildren is not money or other material th things accumulated in one's life but rather a legacy of character and faith. Billy Graham said that. I, I, I like that. It resonates with me. When Joseph's brothers came to Egypt looking for help, they see a prince, a second in command, the prince in Egypt, the one who holds power over their life and their life and death, it is in, in his hands. They see the ring, they see the clothing, they see the authority, and they are humble, and fear is their response toward Joseph. In time, they will get to know the real Joseph, the kind one, the one that is faithful in his call to care for the people around him, even for those that caused him so much pain. You see, Joseph's legacy is so much bigger than the man itself. If we were to read his story as a eulogy, we'll speak about honor, about obedience, self-denial, love, truth, integrity, zeal, and the list could go on for a long time. But when we go back to Joseph's life, we also recognize the pain, the, betray the betrayal, the struggles. And we have to acknowledge that God used a man like Joseph that experienced life so full God used his life not only to save his family, but to save Egypt, to save the whole world at the time, the biblical world. Without Joseph, Israel's story will be a very short one. Without God, Joseph's story will be short too. And I think that is true for all of us. Our legacy, our stories without God might be good and even great by human standard. But will, will it ever be as great as God envisioned it? I want to leave you today with the following thought. There is a lot of potential in you. Your legacy is yet to be written. God is still at work in you today, in your world, in your life, as long and as long as we have these days. You and I still have time to plant that acorn, uh, acorn that will grow into a mighty oak. God is still at work. If God sees something good in, in you, what will other people see? God is not done with you, my friend. He's just getting started. 
And I pray that the people around you will find God's reflection in you. And just as we looked at Joseph to befriend him as a mentor, I pray that your life could be an example to so many. God bless you. Amen and amen.